Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA betting breakdown for tomorrow night's uh, tomorrow night's card, or tomorrow afternoon's card, I should say. And as we discussed last week, um, you know the the approach to MMA betting is completely different than the approach to MMA DFS. And again, I'll probably give this summary before every every card. So if you want to fast forward this, fine. But I think it's important to know where these picks come from. So when you're playing DFS, the prime assumption that most people make, which is probably correct, is to start with the assumption that the props and the lines that are provided by Vegas are, are accurate and representative of what is actually going to happen. And you're supposed to build your DraftKings lineups based on that premise. Um, and it's kind of like an efficient market theory. You have to presume from the beginning that the props or the inside the distance props or the, you know, the pace props or the, you know, the, the, the win odds are somewhat efficient. And then use salary and ownership as the function, which determines how, you know, who, who the best plays are. And then obviously after that, it becomes not just who the best plays are, but what the best lineups are, which is somewhat different. If you're going to play MMA betting or any betting for that matter, whether that be MMA betting, sports betting, basketball betting, football betting, stock market betting, for example, you are automatically presuming when you do those things that the market is not efficient, right? I mean, you have these, these lines and here's you know, an example where you have 20, 20 cents big on either side. So if you're going to, to bet these fights or that, or that, um, or that sport or that basketball game or bet on that stock or better, whatever, you're presuming that there's something wrong with the line. Right? That, that, is the, that is the overarching presumption that's leading you to pick one side or the other, you know? Um, or if you just, you know, feel like just making a pick, know you're giving up the equity and you just couldn't want to have fun. I mean, that's certainly, that's certainly reasonable too, but for the purposes of a pick and the purposes of, you know, trying to get an edge, for example, you are presuming that you have some kind of an edge over the line. So, and if you think about it in that way, I mean, it's very hard. It's hard, it's hard to make that presumption, especially in an extremely liquid market, such as say NFL football. Or, or for the or for that matter, the stock market, right? And you have billions of dollars putting their bets in. MMA is somewhat in the middle. It, it's it's not as liquid as those types of, of of markets, but it's it's somewhat liquid. So you have to presume that it's somewhat efficient, right? Um, but the fact that there have 20, 30 cent bigs does seem to imply that it might not actually be efficient. That that when they put these these big spreads out there, the bookies and, and the bookmakers are suggesting that, you know, if we make these lines too tight, there might be an edge somewhere. So we need to make them a little bit, have a bigger spread. So, so what do you do here when you're betting on MMA? The way I look at MMA and sports betting, all this stuff is, is I'm not going to pretend that I know necessarily more about the fights and the way the fights are going to go than the people who are betting all this money into to these pools. What I am kind of expert in, super expert in the stock market and semi-expert in sports betting and pretty good, I think, with MMA, it's the same thing, is trying to assess how much of that line, which we're going to presume is efficient, has been caused by stuff that is kind of noise, by stuff that is narrative, by stuff that is, you know, outside the actual reality of what's going to cause the win. Um, and when I think about it this way, think about stocks for a minute. I don't want to turn this into a stock market lecture. Um, that's something else. But you think of a stock that is a certain price. The way I look at it is that if the stock is trading at say 50 and the stock is an incredibly easy story to tell for every five-year-old out there, it's probably, it's probably overvalued, right? Probably more of what's going into that price is based on psychology, hope, 
you know, ease and stuff like that than actual numbers and actual chances. And likewise, when you're talking about a sporting event, the easy story one side of the, of the, of the ledger is to tell, it's very likely that that is the overvalued side. And then sometimes you'll see situations where you'll, 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 you'll hear all the same take on one side of the, of the equation, and yet the line is pick them. And you're thinking, well, if it's so easy to pick the other side, something's, the other guy's got to have something, right? And I think the something that the opposing side has is probably more based on reality than the, just, than all the money coming in on the kind of easy take. So that, that is the way I approach sports betting. It's the way I approach anything like that, where there's an assumption that the market could be somewhat efficient. So last week we, we, gave some kind of weird plays, whatever. And we ended up winning eight units, which is pretty, <laughs> listen, I'm not going to expect that. All, all I can promise you is this, that you're probably not going to hear this type of analysis anywhere else. It's the exact same type of analysis I use when dealing with my, my stock market, and my hedge fund, which I've obviously made a lot of money on over the last 20 years. And if you are going to bet these fights, I, I, I can't promise you, but I'm pretty sure that that you're getting good value or better value than the market. And I don't know if what I'm telling you is going to be worth the 30 cents a big, if you want to know the truth, but if you're going to bet anyway, I do think this is the proper way to analyze things like this, as we will discuss. All right. So where are we going to start? Okay. So we're, we're going to start with, uh, I don't know. Do you want to start with the first fight? I'll start with this. So Natalie Silva versus Teresa Blada. So you have two women's prospects. And there, there's not a, that much information on these two. Not a lot of fight tape, not a, not a lot of whatever. And I, I have, do watch a lot of content. I watch a lot of stuff. And th this, is, this is what I've heard. So Natalie Silva is, she was only, she was 12 and five or something like that. And then she took a couple of years off. And against uh, somebody who was supposedly really good, she put on an incredible performance. And the idea is that sometimes when a, a fighter goes into a two-year uh, layoff, you know, they, they, are, they have a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of improvements being made. And if you watch 20 different content providers this week or 20 different reports or whatever, You'll hear a very similar take in that this is just a new fighter. The person that fought all those other times is just not the same as the fighter that's fighting now. Um, and unfortunately, I've heard that just way too much. So quite honestly, I, I do want to uh, take the Teresa Blade aside. Um, you know, from all I've heard of these two fighters, you'd expect that that Silva would be like minus 200. Because the other thing you've heard is that Teresa Blada is, you know, while she does have, you know, a decent amount, decent grappling skill set, from what I've here heard, it's just not going to work against Natalie Silva. You know, that Natalie Silva is just much too talented to deal with it. And that Teresa Blada is young, you know, and, and so it's just not going to work. So all this stuff, Sounds like it should be minus 200, but it's actually minus 165. So for me, uh, that's good enough for me. I'll take a shot on Teresa Blada. The only question is whether I want to play Teresa Blada at plus 140 or Teresa Blada, um, maybe something else. So we're going to take a look at this pretty quickly. And you'll see Blada by decision is plus 215. Uh, as opposed to bladed by some bladed by submission plus 1100. That's, I gotta tell you, that's pretty tempting. Um, because if in fact she does have like all this wrestling, I mean, there, there is a possibility that she could get a submission. Um, boy, that is really, really tempting. It's, it, you know, it's a scary enough proposition that, 
it makes me nervous to just play by decision. So what I am going to do is I'm going to wimp out a little bit. I'm just going to play Blada plus the 140. Now, again, just, uh, just so you guys know, I'm going to bet every fight and I'm going to bet everything one unit. I'm, I just, it's the way I decide I'm going to do this. I'm going to come up with something every fight, even if I don't like something. So you, you can judge whether I'm confident or not, but, and I'm going to put the same amount in each thing. So, and the other thing is I'm not going to be able to do this now, as you'll see, because it's going to say unable to verify location probably. Oh no, let me do it. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So that's it. Um, okay. Moving on to the next fight. Um, See. Brady Heastan versus Fernie Garcia. Okay, so this one it's gonna be really ugly. Um, because Brady Heastan is probably like almost a theoretical lock in, in DraftKings. But this is not DraftKings. This is this is this is wagering. And this is this is quite the swarm on Brady Heastan. Uh it's it's almost ridiculous. Um the 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 hate there's like two fighters here that are getting so much hate on this card and we're going to be playing both of them and one of the hate is is Fernie garcia i mean i'll tell you i'll tell you what i'll do i, I will re re remove my bet if anybody can find me one take on the internet or anywhere that selects Fernie garcia plus the 145 it just doesn't exist this is what you got. Brady Houston had a really, really tough final against uh, Ricky Tercios, finals of the Ultimate Fighter. Got six takedowns, super wrestling, very aggressive, in your face, young, all the upside. And all I'm getting about Fernie Garcia is he stinks. Nothing else. He stinks. Um, so, as I say, that's good enough for me. Uh, we'll take Fernie Garcia plus the 145. Ha. <sighs> Um, do I want to talk myself into something stupid here? Probably not. But let's take a look. Um, Garcia inside the distance, or or well, this is total. Um, Garcia by decision plus two twenty five. That's probably pretty safe. I, mean, I don't think he's gonna get a finish. But is it worth it to only get the extra eighty cents? Just in case he gets a you know some great some knockout or something like that. Now, once again, I'll I'll be a wimp and I will go with Fernie Garcia. Just plus the just plus the um, the one forty. All right, Vanessa Demopoulos versus uh, 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 Maria Oliveira. This is kind of a tough one because you're getting kind of love on both sides here. So, so Vanessa Demopoulos and Maria Oliveira, it's pretty low level. Um, and it's striker versus grappler pretty much. And I really don't have too much of an opinion. I think you're getting a lot of, you know, a pretty reasonable takes on both sides. Don't really think there's much of an edge either way. So what I'll do just for, just for the hell of it, Hold on, I gotta pause. Sorry, I just took a call, so I, I forgot where I left off. Um, so, so yeah, I guess I was just I was looking at the at the inside the distance props and things like that. Um, I really don't want to give nothing out for this fight, so I want to give out something. I guess Demopolis by submission probably be where I would go because if in fact she does win it's pretty likely I guess yeah okay so we'll, we'll we'll do that we'll go actually this is going to be terrible um you know what let this is what we're going to do we're going to keep this one off to the side and we're going to keep this as a parlay piece. So whatever we don't have as a, as, as a good bet, we'll just pick some random parlay. So we'll play to go the distance. Yeah. Let's we'll play to go the distance minus minus one ninety. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to do. We're going to play to go the distance minus minus one ninety because this fight's totally ridiculous. Okay. Place bet one eighty. This fight to go the distance. Very good. 
So it's checking my location. Okay, so now it it's not letting me do it. So it's fine. Okay, moving on. Sorry. Um, Ricky Tercios versus Kevin Natividad. Okay, so here we go. Ricky Tercios came out with a lot of hype, having won the um, Ultimate Fighter. Really exciting fighter. There was all kinds of volumes, all kinds of stuff. And he came out against, uh, uh, in his last fight, he threw 200 significant strike attempts and, com and connected on 27. And he lost. And this, and they're bringing him back to face Kevin Natividad. Hold on a second. Sorry, once again. Um, in any case. So he's fighting uh, Kevin Natividad now. And Ricky Tercios is getting a pass on that last uh, performance. Um, and and it's actually quite amazing. If, if you, I swear to you, if, if you watch... 100 videos 100 read 100 articles or whatever not that i run them all but i can get a sense of this the narrative i'm getting is they still like ricky tercios and they're feeding him somebody that has no chance to beat him and and kevin natividad apparently is just literally the worst i mean he's almost as bad as, Fer as fernie garcia if you believe everything that you hear so why is this not minus 300 so let let the let the garbage dump continue uh we will take Kevin Natividad uh, against Rick, Ricky Tercios. I think it's pretty safe to take him inside the distance. I mean, uh, by decision. But let's just see. I, I want to get at least plus 200, though, if I did that. Let's see. Natividad by decision. Oh, he's plus 300, or we'll take that. So Natividad, we will take him plus decision. Or maybe not. Again, can he get the KO? It's a tough card to, to, to prop at this. I mean, he's a he's only a plus 450 to win by KO. So we're, we're probably going to do this again. We're going to go Natividad plus, just plus the 135. Nice and easy. Um, moving on. So this next fight is Miles Johns versus Vince Morales. And as I'm going through these, I mean, this is, it's going to be yet another one, which is, I mean, we're going to go, we're going to probably go 0-14 on this. I mean, 0-13, because it, just so many of these look the same to me. Um, so Miles Johns against Vince Morales, and you have Miles Johns is a minus 170, and he's got the better striking, he's got the better wrestling, um, and, and unfortunately for the Vince Morales side, I mean, he hasn't gotten any love at all. It's, it's like he has zero to offer, as, as like a, maybe a plus 400. But he's only plus 145. I mean, who is taking him? Um, I, I just feel as though that there's there's all the value is going to be on the Morales side here. I, I just, I just, it's just, uh, again, this is just 25 years, more like 50 years of, of, of analyzing this kind of stuff. I mean, the other thing you could do if you really had to take Miles Johns is play him, you know, inside the distance or something like that. But I, I just think that Morales... At what at plus one forty five is is the value here. So that's 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 what I'm going to do. Just not uh, not you know not inside the distance or anything like that. Just a straight bet. Morales plus one forty five. Okay, so you have uh, on the other hand, you have Mar Marina Moroz against Jennifer Maya. So here, all right, we we you guys want to take a favorite. Finally, you're going to get a chance to take a favorite because now you have. The, the women's fighters and nobody loves taking women's fight women's fighter favorites okay and marina moroz um you know in her last fight she 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 fought uh maria agapova 
And people, some people that want to give her credit for that win, but a lot of people are just saying that Marina Agapova is so easy to take down. It really wasn't it was such a great win. And then Jennifer Myers fought nothing but, but, but top contenders. I mean, she's fought like some of the best of the best. And Rose's level of competition is just much, uh, is much weaker. Um, so what the hell is she doing at minus 190? Um, so like I said, uh, with, with all that being out in the ecosystem, I just, I'm just going to take Moreau's and, and, and what I'm also going to do is let's see if I can get a little better than minus 190. If I can get, is a better player inside the distance or by sub, I don't want to play by submission. I think Maya is probably good enough to, to, to hold off the, the finish. So I, I'm going to say Moreau's by decision. So let's take a look. Uh, Moreau's by decision. Probably can get even money. Yeah, I think Moreau's by decision is fair. So we'll take Moreau's by decision. Um, okay, next. Charles Johnson versus Jalgas Zamagulov. Um, all right, so this, this, one's, this one's interesting. So you have Charles Johnson, who, uh, you know, he's, he has a boxing background and he, he's kind of an athlete as well. I think he must, I think he might've played D1 football or something like that. So he is an athlete. So he has quite a bit of cardio and he was kind of thrown to the wolves in his last fight against Moham Makayev. And the narrative coming out of this fight is that he actually kind of represented himself pretty well in the, um, in the striking, um, even though he eventually got taken down like a whole bunch of times that it was pretty admirable performance by him. Um, on the other hand, you have Zuma Gulov, who, boy, he, the narrative behind him is that he's basically got robbed in his last fight, or at least lost a tough decision. And he fights very kind of greasy, kind of decisionist type uh, fights. Um, he holds you up against the cage. He goes for, for takedowns and things like that, but he's not much of a finisher. So I think what I'm going to do in this fight is I'm going to recommend uh, to play this fight inside the distance. So let's take a look and see what this fight in general, fight props, fight inside the distance is plus 150. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to go anybody specific inside the distance. We're just going to go this fight inside the distance. So uh, that's what we're going to do with, uh, with this one. Okay, uh, Jack Della Maddalena versus Danny Roberts. So uh, Jack Della is minus 610. Danny Roberts is plus 460. Um, I think that this is probably a fair line as far as the money line goes, given where the, the hype is coming. What you're getting, if anything, is, well, I don't know if I want to lay 610, um, but but he's but Magdalena is definitely going to win. Um, so that doesn't provide me too much with respect to the money line. What I will say is this, I think that the over is pretty live here. Um, uh, in that, you're getting a whole bunch of, of, of he's just going to KO him in the first round. His boxing is so precise. Danny Roberts being thrown to the wolves. I don't know, man. One and a half rounds, that's, that's not a lot of time. Uh, and let's face it, I mean, Magdalena, in his fight against Amid, he was getting beat. Um, in the first round, I mean, he was getting, he was, he got taken down. He was getting, he was in a submission position. Now he fought his way out of it, then KO'd him. But you know, in another universe, um, this is a totally different situation. And Danny Roberts, I mean, he's not great or anything like that, but he's got this feeling he's going to survive at least a round. Um, so for me, I'm going to go over one and a half once again for 180. That's that's a fun sweat. It's kind of like the like the Spider Man movie, like just just root that he stays in the cage for a certain amount of time and hope. You know, listen, I hope that that uh, Roberts doesn't get the KO here and ruin my one and a half that way. But that, that's what I'm going to do here over one and a half in this fight. Okay. All right, good fight. Uh, Andre Fialo against Muslim Salikov. Fialo is is going to be a very very strong DraftKings play just because his inside the distance prop is, is is stronger than some other fighters at his price range given his winning chances. But as far as betting goes, 
he's not getting as much love on the betting side. Uh, he, 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 he apparently has a pretty, pretty bad chin. Um, he has a bad fight IQ and Salikov, even though he got KO in his last fight, he's, he's very technical. He's very sharp. And I'm getting a lot more love on the Salikov side in, in the betting streets. So what I'm probably going to do is actually take Salikov to win uh, in the betting line. Um, and what I think could be an interesting attempt is, is maybe Fialo inside the distance. Not, I, mean, I don't mean by decisions. I mean by decision. Because inside the distance, he's, he's you know only like plus 200 or something like that. Fialo by KO 175. No, you want to try Fialo inside the distance. I mean, excuse me, by decision. Or are we going to wimp again and just go Fialo minus 105? Yeah, you know what we're going to do? We'll do, um, we'll do Fialo. I want, to, I want to flip a coin here. Fialo just doesn't go to decision all too often. Then again, Salikov, I mean, he is not a real high volume guy. You know, we're we're just gonna pick him. We'll just go Fialo. In case he gets the KO, we'll we will we will go with Fialo minus I mean plus minus one oh five. Okay. Um Chase Sherman versus Waldez Cortez Acosta. Um this is probably going to be uh considered chasing, but I, I can't resist this price here. So you have Cortez Acosta. We'll go over the narratives and see if we can't come up with something. So Waldez Cortez Acosta just fought two weeks ago, um, and he fought Jared Bandera, and he was a big favorite against him. And he looked just okay. I mean, he didn't look great, if you want to know the truth. Um, he didn't come close to finishing him. It's kind of, you know, outboxed him. So some people thought that that Vandera should have gotten at least, you know, either a split or the win because he was taking a lot of abuse to his legs. So one thing you're hearing a little bit is that all that abuse to his legs plus the two-week comeback makes him kind of fishy. So my first thought was to just take Cortez Acosta. Um, but then you have Chase Sherman, who's just the guy everybody loves to hate. So there's always this kind of some natural – natural line value with Chase Sherman. So for me, I'm probably just off of the the general idea. But what I just can't, I can't avoid is just to go right back to the same thing and, and go right back to Cortez by decision. Cortez by decision is kind of a ridiculous plus 350. Um the other thing I might consider doing is Sherman by decision. Or, well, as long as I'm going to do that, why don't I just go fight the ghost decision? It's a good question. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go fight ghost decision plus 175. That's, that's, that's actually a better idea. Fight goes decision plus 185. Okay. Um, Moving on, uh, Kennedy and Shuku versus Ion Kutalaba. Um, really good fight. Uh, there's probably some degree of of recency bias against Kutalaba, but but in his last fight that he lost, he got submitted by Ryan Spann, who just came back with a big underdog win, which we had by the way um, last week. So that takes care of that recency bias problem. So I think overall, I believe that there's no real kind of like sneaky value on either side as far as the money line goes. I, I think I'm just going to go with, with, with fight doesn't go to decision here. Um, it's, and just pick my favorite side. Excuse me. I mean, sorry, fight goes to decision because that's the one thing you're getting is you're getting a lot of, a lot of takes that, this fight just gets KO'd. Um, so I'll just play this one goes to decision. Um, fight props, plus 225. Fight goes to decision. 
and it's tough. Um, but, you know, I just think that's where the natural value is going to be. Um, and finally, we have Derek Lewis versus Sergei Spivak. I'll tell you where I think the bad value is. I think the bad value is in all the Derek Lewis stuff. Um, you're getting all this that that he's that he's always in the fight. He's always in the fight. He always has that KO. I, I'm just not interested. I mean, for me, I'm I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play Spivak and pick my favorite round uh, by KO. So it's either gonna be round one or round two or round three. Let's take a look at the fight and see where I can't get my favorite my favorite uh, my favorite uh, round. So we're going to have round props or we can get much, much, much fun, much more fun. We can either do spin at round one. That's no fun. Okay. Spin back round two. Can I get Lewis to last to round three? Now we're going to play round two at 500 unless we want to go Like something more. What I want him exactly by submission or something like that in round two. Can I do that? Well, here we go. Okay. We have Spivak by KO exactly in round two, plus seven hundred. So the idea is takedowns takedowns, and then eventually ground and pound in round two. Let's go. So th this really could be an O for, an o for the card. But just to, just to recap, I think I'm missing some. So Spivak by KO, round two, plus 700. And Shuko to go the distance, plus 225. You have Sherman Cortez to go the distance, plus 175. Fialo, uh, money line minus 105. We have Della, uh, Jack Della, Roberts over plus 105. We have Moreau's fight goes to the, oh, no, no, Juma Gulas goes, does not go the distance plus 150. We have Moreau's win by decision minus 105. We have Morales plus 145, Natividad plus 135. Uh, Oh, no, no, no. We do not want by decision. We just want the money line. And then we have Demopolis Oliveira to go the distance at minus 190. And then we got to go back to this, these first fights. I forgot about these. So we'll go back to Blada. I'll put this in our, in, our, in our board here. Blada plus 140. And then who did we say? Garcia plus 145. 12 bets, $2,160. And they will be put in. I put them in now. Let's see. Enough money. I have enough money in there. Oh, I bet them before. Oops. <laughs> I put them in already. Um, let me let's let's let you make sure I have this. We, we, we have this. We're, we're good. All right. Uh, good luck, everybody.